you uh, <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to attend and um like I chatted there to you, if if you could uh, answer the questions that I've put forth, um, that'll help me to present more directly to what it is that you're interested in learning. Um, and and feel free to chat at any time, and we'll try to adjust, address those as we go along. Uh, I am David McMahon, um, and uh, just uh, give you a little introduction here of myself. Um, I, I have a master's degree in integrative nutrition, so I've been very interested in, in nutrition uh, and especially uh, natural um, solutions to health problems. So started uh, the company OcuSci going on 12 years now, and I have been a, a dry eye sufferer for quite a while. Um, my speed score is 14, and that may or may not mean anything to you, but we'll talk a little bit about that. But that's uh, moderate to severe. And I've been in the medical device industry uh, for over 25 years. So we're going to talk about the major diseases that are linked to nutrition, you know, around eyes, of course. Um, what are the nutrient deficiencies that are really impacting eye health? And what are some clinically proven solutions? Uh, the only thing that I'm interested in are things that have been clinically proven in clinical studies uh, held to the highest standard. That's all we do here at OcuSci, and that's all I've ever done uh, in my career. So uh, this is one of those times where I'm going to ask you to... Uh, to show of hands, but actually go ahead and put that in the chat box. Um, how many of you take omega-3, lutein, uh, and zeaxanthin? And I'm interested to know that so we can talk a little more specifically about that, but it's uh, it helps me know kind of who the audience is. So in terms of a dry eye, a uh, huge problem, obviously, in the U.S., um, 45 million um, sufferers in the U.S. And, and the numbers vary, uh, you know, from 10 to 30 percent of the population, kind of depending on how uh, you define that uh, condition. But the major causes of uh, dry eye are eye surgeries, uh, LASIK or cataract. You know, it's, it's the number one side effect uh, of LASIK. You know, 40% of patients suffer from some sort of dry eye. Uh, omega-3 to omega-6 imbalance. We're going to talk a bit about that. Um, autoimmune diseases. I've already seen someone mention Sjogren's there. Screen time. Um, dry eye 15 years ago was a condition that affected um, 40 plus. Uh, now, when you talk to eye doctors, they're going to tell you that high school kids, college students, are suffering from dry eye. And it really has to do with screen time. Uh, the more time you spend on a screen, the less you blink. The less you blink, uh, the less uh, or the fewer lipids you're actually expressing onto your uh, tear layer, which causes evaporative dry eye, which we're gonna talk about as well. Uh, obesity, poor diet. I mean, this kind of goes with everything else uh, in terms of diabetes. Um, and obesity, you know, kind of epidemic that's that's facing the Western world. So what is evaporative dry eye? So evaporative dry eye is caused by MGD, and that is meibomian gland dysfunction. So what that means is the glands in your eyelids are not functioning properly, which in turn means that you are not getting lipids. So that's the third part. If you look at the three layers here, the third part of the tear layer is the lipid layer. If you think about water, if you put oil on top of water, it's going to protect that water from evaporating. And that's exactly how your tears work. So if your meibomian glands are not functioning properly, you're not getting enough lipids on those tears, which is causing you to have evaporative dry eye. That's the most common form of dry eye, 85%. So let's look at uh, macular degeneration. 
So this is the leading cause of blindness in the Western world. And you can see that the trend is going in the absolute wrong direction here. So in, in all, you know, kind of uh, races, um, so an 80% increase is what's forecast uh, through 2050. Now, why is that? What causes macular degeneration? And if you don't know, macular degeneration is when you start to lose the central vision uh, in your eyes. Phone call here, <laughs> disrupting us. Um, so the risk factors for macular degeneration are age. Uh, the older you get, the more likely. Uh, genetics, if someone, uh, if your parents have uh, macular degeneration, you're, you're at a much uh, higher risk of developing it. Smoking, um, because smoking is delivering free radicals. So diet, again, uh, free radicals are causing um, the disruption to uh, those cells in your cornea. Um, UV blue light and obesity. Those are your main factors. So let's talk about the key nutrients that really kind of drive eye health. So omega-3 and then the carotenoids, <clears throat> lutein and zeaxanthin, and then vitamin D3 as well. So what's so special about carotenoids? Um, these are um, antioxidants that concentrate in the eye themselves. They're the only ones that actually concentrate in the eye. So it's very important to get those into your system. Um, you, do not, you do not produce lutein and zeaxanthin. You have to get them either from your diet or from a supplement. And um, you know, where, does it, where do those come from? Uh, actually, we'll get back to that. We're going to talk about omega-3 first here. So omega-3, you've all heard of omega-3. It's contained in fish oil. Um, you can also get it from, uh, from grains, you know, flax, uh, walnuts, but we'll talk about why that's very difficult to get uh, actual, the important uh, part of the omega-3, the EPA and the DHA, uh, very difficult to get that from non-marine sourced um, sources. So the average intake in the U.S. is about 100 milligrams, 111 milligrams per day. The clinically effective dose, uh, specifically to dry eye and, and all the other benefits that, that uh, EPA DHA can deliver, is 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams daily. So you know we're getting less than 10% of what we really need on a daily basis to improve um, these, uh, these diseases. So, you know, what are the benefits? And I'm sure you've all heard of the many benefits of omega-3, but um, reducing, you know, inflammation is one of the keys here. 42, so that, that's just an overall health benefit. If you can increase the omega-3, decrease the omega-6, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, in terms of dry eye, you know, there are many studies out there very well done studies. We have a published study ourselves. In our study, uh, we're seeing a 42% a improvement in dry eye symptoms. And that's just in 30 days of, of taking um, this dose. And in terms of macular degeneration, omega-3 also has uh, a key benefit, which is 38% uh, risk reduction. So very important. So let's talk about omega-6 to omega-3. Uh, omega-6 comes from vegetable oils uh, and also uh, animals, right? Omega-3 mostly comes from marine-based sources. We'll talk some more about that. But if you look at the history of, of humans, um, the ratio between these two things, which actually compete for absorption in your body. So that's why this ratio is really key because the more omega-6 you take, the less omega-3 you're actually going to be able to uh, absorb because they, they actually compete uh, for bioabsorption. So you can see the ratio 100 years ago was more like five to one. Ideal ratio is four to one. This, this uh, 
curve shows us up to 2000. So we, we probably need to update this. So it shows 10 to one, so doubled in a hundred years. We are now more like 14 to one, uh, going the wrong way again. So 14 times the omega six to omega three. <clears throat> so what, why is that important? Well, for many reasons, but we're gonna focus here on dry eye. So this is a, maybe a little bit complicated chart here, but I'll, I'll try to explain it to you real, real quick. This comes from a huge uh, Brigham and Women's study, 3,567 women, so very large study. And they looked at the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 in the diet. And what they found was your odds ratio, so your risk of developing dry eye disease, if you were at less than four to one, omega-6 to omega-3, you had no increased risk of dry eye. So again, four to one ideal. As you go up to 15 to one, which again is about the average now for the US, you've got a two and a half times risk of developing dry eye. So again, omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, 15 to one, two and a half times risk of dry eye, get back to four to one, you've got no increased risk of dry eye. So very clear, very large study, very, very strong correlation there. Additional, I love to share this slide. Um, some of you may know that kind of the whole uh, push for omegas, omega-3 in particular came from a lot of research uh, out of Greenland Eskimos, you know, going back 50, 60 years now. And what you see again, here is the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, uh, 14 to one in the US and Western Europe, risk uh, of death from a cardiovascular event, 45%. Everybody knows, right? Heart disease is the number one killer. Japan, Four to one, Remember we talked about a four to one ideal ratio, omega-6. Look at that, 12% risk of death uh, from cardiac. Greenland Eskimos, one to one, right? They're eating uh, whale blubber and, and all kinds of marine-based um, protein and fats, of course, that, that has that uh, omega-3 in it. And not a whole lot of, uh, not a whole lot of refined oils which is where we mostly get our omega-6, same, same in Japan, 7%. So just this is the added benefit that you're decreasing inflammation, you're decreasing your risk uh, of you know, a, uh, a cardiac event. So very, very important here. So live like an Eskimo. Omega-7, uh, we have this in our formula and this is a, a more recent discovery in the last 10 years. There have been some good data showing uh, anti-inflammatory. I'll talk about that. We don't really know what the intake in the U.S. is. It's got to be very, very small because omega-7 is found in the same fatty fish uh, that we would derive omega-3. And since that's only 100 milligrams, we know this is much less. Um, so the And the nice thing about omega-7 is you don't need a ton to really have an impact. So 50 to 100 milligrams uh, will give you significant impact. And it is an anti-inflammatory. Um, you're gonna hear a lot more about omega-7. So in terms of our omega-7, it comes from Alaskan wild caught pollock. Um, you can also find this in macadamia nuts, but it comes with some, some downside there. You don't really wanna source it from there. And again, it's a very important signaling molecule that can lower inflammation. So here's just one study. C-reactive protein is kind of a general marker of inflammation. If you go to a, a doc and they're trying to figure out if you uh, are having uh, inf inflammation in your body that they can't explain, they'll do a C-reactive protein test. It's a marker of inflammation. And uh, omega-7 reduced it by 44% in one large study. So uh, some really good evidence there. So why is, you probably know, <laughs> but let's go into a little more detail. Why uh, is our ratio so far off? So what, what are we eating as, as Americans? 
So again, let's talk a little bit about what these things are, right? Omega-3 and specifically EPA, DHA, those are the important um, long chain fatty acids that we want from our omega-3. And this really matters. When you look at your own fish oil, and I know it's confusing and the, and the uh, fish oil brands make it confusing on purpose, uh, but on the label as required um, by the FDA, we have to state what is the amount of omega-3 and then what is the amount of EPA and DHA? Those are separate listings on your supplement facts. So take a look at that. It's very important because you can have a thousand, a typical drugstore supermarket fish oil is a one gram pill. So a thousand milligrams of fish oil. Well, what does that mean? It, it really matters what's inside that fish oil because uh, there's, there's heavily refined fish oil to get to a very potent EPA DHA. And then there's the garbage that is the majority of fish oil out there. Uh, so in a 1000 milligram fish oil pill, typically you're getting 300 to 400 milligrams of omega-3. Okay. But you're only getting like a hundred uh, milligrams of EPA and DHA. Okay, that is not going to do it. We talked about 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day. Um, you know, our, our omega-3 is, you know, five times that. Um, so you need to really look at your label. And we're not going to get into this today, but the other big factor is, here is triglyceride omega-3 versus ethyl ester omega-3. You may have never even heard that. Again, the fish oil companies don't want you to know this because triglyceride omega-3 is the natural form of omega-3. And that is what uh, how we can absorb omega-3. We can't absorb ethyl ester, which is an alcohol, omega-3 without converting it to a triglyceride. It's the only way we can absorb it into our, into our bloodstream. So uh, the majority, and I mean 99.9% .9 of the fish oils in this country are ethyl ester alcohol. And the way you can tell is when you look at your label in your bottle, it will uh, not say triglyceride omega-3 because the four companies, and we're one of them, that make a triglyceride omega-3, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money to get that fish oil refined to a triglyceride omega-3. So we put it on the label. It's the same as eating a salmon filet. That's easily absorbed whereas the ethyl ester has to get turned back into triglyceride in your body and you lose 70% of the absorption. So we're not going to go any further on that one today, but that is very, very important when you're talking about fish oil. So again, where do we get this from? We get it from fatty fish, especially cold fatty fish. It's in the fat layer of that fish. Uh, you can get it, uh, ALA, you can get from flaxseed, hemp, walnut. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but it really is not converted to EPA DHA very well at all in your body. And we'll talk about that. Uh, so omega-6, why has our consumption of that gone up, you know, 10, 20 fold in the last hundred years? Well, if you think about it, it's uh, linoleic acid and it's refined vegetable oils, soy, corn, sunflower, safflower, and uh, animal fats, right? So eggs, dairy, and red meat. So 120 years ago, you, know, you really weren't eating a ton of um, refined vegetable oils. So that's in baked goods and anything that's packaged is loaded with vegetable oils. That's where the majority of this omega-6 comes from. So now let's, let's look at, great. So salmon is, is a great source of omega-3, correct? Yes. But what's the big difference between wild and farmed salmon? I'm sure you've heard that wild is better than farmed, but how much better? And, and let's talk about the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So there's a huge difference. If you look at a half filet of wild salmon, you're getting 3.4 grams of omega-3. That's great. And you're only getting 341 milligrams. So that's a 1 to 10 ratio of omega-3 to omega-6, right? So you're getting 10 times more omega-3. That's what you want. On a farmed salmon, you are getting only, you're getting 4.2 grams, that's great. 
but you're getting almost two grams of omega-6, a ton of omega-6. So why is that? That's seven times more than the wild salmon. So it's a one to two instead of a, a one to 10. So why is that? Well, what do you think they feed uh, farmed salmon? They feed them a lot of grain and a lot of corn. And what does that remind you of? <laughs> so is there a big difference between eating farmed salmon and eating red meat? What do you think? I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you all just a, a quick second to chat in your answer. Go ahead and tell me, what do you think? Is a farmed salmon closer to red meat? Uh, yes or no? And I'm gonna take a look at some of the chat here. Just, I'm gonna give you one minute to look at this. Look at some of the answers. I see a lot of omega-3 out there. All three. Now I'm gonna guess that means omega-3, six, and nine. And let's just talk about that for a quick second because I know there are omega-3, six, and nines out there. Um, you know, for my money, that makes absolutely no sense. We just talked about that we all have 15 times, 14 times too much omega-6 in our diets. So why would we want to supplement with more omega-6? <laughs> and again, omega-6 and omega-3 compete for absorption. So if you take those at the same time, uh, you're definitely going to absorb less omega-3 than, than you would have in the first place. So I, I think that's a complete waste of time. And no one is low on omega-6. Just does not happen. So, Okay, so let's look at farmed or in this case, grass-fed versus grain-fed uh, red meat. So if you were to consume grass-fed beef, you're going to get uh, about a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So that's great. Um, so now, but, but most beef you know, that you get in a hamburger or you get at the supermarket is going to be you know, grain fed, typically they raise them out and the, put them out in the, in the fields and then they fatten them up at the end on grain. So this is two third pasture, one third pasture. So uh, this, this means, you know, more uh, grain fed at the end here. So the typical beef is going to be, you know, one third pasture and the rest grain fed. So eight to one versus one to one, right? Omega-6 in blue here to omega-3. So does that look a lot like our farmed salmon? Not quite, but still a ton of omega-6. So it's a heck of a lot closer than it should be. Let's put it that way. All right, so let's talk about trying to get your uh, DHA in particular from uh, from flax seed or chia seeds or, or even walnuts, how many milligrams do you think you would need to consume uh, to, to achieve 200 milligrams of DHA, which isn't even a ton, by the way, that we have that in one of our pills. Um, and, and you're typically going to take two of those. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I was just trying to look at the answers here. So I'm, again, I'm just going to give you a sec to... Uh, Take a look at the answers. <laughs> somebody liked uh, somebody liked our comparison of the farm to the uh, farm fish to the to the beef. So good, glad. So anyway, I won't belabor this, but uh, it's it's a ton. It's forty thousand milligrams. Think about that of ALA. So that's um, linoleic acid that you derive from flax or chia seeds. Okay, so what does all that mean? And, and here's the reason, uh, alpha linolenic, I said linoleic, linolenic acid converts at 5% EPA. So if you took one gram, you'd, you'd get uh, 50 milligrams EPA and you'd get five milligrams of DHA. 
So you see that the conversion from ALA to EPA DHA, which is what you really need, those long chain fatty acids to, to derive the benefits of omega-3, it's very difficult slash impossible to get it from a vegetable source. So every, uh, uh, every uh, medical community in the world recommends marine sourced omega-3. Okay, so I won't, I won't belabor that anymore, uh, except for, <laughs> I lied, um, except for, whoops, jumped ahead here, except for this last uh, slide that shows, you know, what would it take for you to get to one gram of EPA DHA? So a thousand milligrams of EPA DHA, a third of a can of sardines per day, 44 flaxseed uh, oil soft gels of one gram each or 10 ounce bag of flaxseed. So again, nobody's doing that. Um, so, okay. So let's get back to lutein and zeaxanthin. So take a look here. Uh, you need six milligrams uh, of lutein and zeaxanthin, uh, sorry, of lutein per day to, to really get the protective benefits. So look at what you would have to eat. Uh, this is per one cup of these vegetables, uncooked. So if you see this big bowl over here on the left, that's a cup of kale, and that'll get you 24 milligrams. I mean, maybe, maybe some of you are eating that every day. I, I like kale, um, I like spinach. And, uh, but it's pretty difficult to eat that every day. And you look at some of these other, um, some of these other sources, eggs that have almost nothing, peas, you know, corn has almost nothing. So pretty difficult to get this from your diet. And in fact, when you look at the actual dietary intake, it's about a milligram of lutein a day and less than a milligram of zeaxanthin. And again, you need six to 10 of lutein and two milligrams of zeaxanthin for the proven uh, benefits. So what are those benefits? So macular degeneration, we talked a little bit about a uh, huge you know, reduction in the risk of developing macular degeneration. There was a, a very large study called the AREDS2 study uh, done by the NAH. They've actually done two of them. That's why it's called AREDS2. Uh, and, and, you know, 7,000 patients. So this is the gold standard for protecting the macula uh, of your eye uh, and also cataracts. So, you know, there's a huge uh, risk, 36% reduction in the risk of developing cataracts. Um, that means, it doesn't mean you'll never get cataracts, but it means that it may push it back. So the risk of getting cataracts at 65, the risk of getting them at 70 gets pushed back um, because eventually you probably will develop them, but uh, this reduces your risk of developing them earlier. So again, we're just not getting anywhere near that dose. Uh, vitamin D3, probably heard a whole heck of a lot about because you know half the US uh, at least is deficient in, in D3. Average intake uh, less than uh, or around 300 IUs a day you need at least a thousand a day to have benefit. And again, we see a risk reduction of macular degeneration uh, and that you know half the population is deficient uh, in vitamin D3. So we're getting less than a third of what we need. And then you probably heard this in all the, all the um, reporting on COVID, you know, significant reduction in the risk of developing um, COVID if you have sufficient vitamin D and the severity is much, much less. Same goes for flu, uh, same goes for infections of the lungs. So vitamin D3 seems to be uh, protective in terms of reducing the severity of sickness if you can get your uh, vitamin D consumption up and get those blood levels up. So, uh, and then just you know, additional benefits, improve smooth muscle tone. So that's the endothelium, that's the inside of the gut, um, the heart muscle, you know, smooth muscle, um, protective, uh, antioxidant, uh, neuroprotective, dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, many benefits of D3. And then you may or may not know this, but you know, what does it take? So yes, can you get a vitamin D3 from the sun? Absolutely, you can. Uh, I live in San Diego and, you know, my D3 is still not where it should be. It is because I, I supplement, but 
Um, I cannot get enough from the sun. I'm uh, Irish and uh, if I go out in the sun, so I have to have 50% of my skin exposed. So no shirt on for 20 minutes uh, between 10 and two. So when the sun is strong and you know, if I do that, I'm gonna be red. <laughs> I'm gonna have sunburn, so I just can't do that. And then half the country, uh, more than half the country above this line in the northern latitudes, uh, you can't even um, get the, you can't get a strong enough sun um, for half the year. So if you live above this line in the northern uh, latitude of the U.S., you have no way to generate enough D3. So you really have to supplement. So that kind of you know hopefully outlined the issues and you know what we're deficient in uh, in terms of dry eye disease, macular degeneration, and a few other things. So what is it that we can do uh, to really you know treat? So dry eye, you can't really eradicate dry eye, but you can maintain it and you can get it such that the symptoms uh, have gone away. You can manage your symptoms. That's really what you can do. You can't cure it, but you can manage it. So this is a clinical study that uh, was published oh, about four years ago now. Uh, and what we did was we combined <clears throat> our omega-3 that also includes vitamin D3 and lutein. So it's a very eye-specific formula. It's called dry eye complete with five minutes of a warm compress uh, every day for 30 days with, uh, I believe it was 37 patients. So the, the, the way we look at that in the eye world, that's uh, 74 eyes. So, and, and here's just kind of what's in the dry eye complete, uh, 1400 milligrams of omega-3. And we'll talk about EPA, DHA in the next slide because uh, we just detail how important that was. Uh, 66 milligrams omega-7 we had talked about, seven milligrams so over that six threshold and a thousand IUs of D3. So we really use the clinical research to drive what we need to formulate such that we can deliver the best product here. Wild Caught in Alaska, we're the only company in the eye space that uh, sources are omega-3 directly from Alaska, wild caught, sustainable, and actually processed here in Ohio. Uh, and then it's made into soft gels for us. So all made in the U.S., sourced and made in the U.S. There are basically no other companies that are making the level of triglyceride omega-3 that we're making here in the U.S. Um, no fishy burps. That's very important. If you've taken fish oil, probably one of the issues you've had is fishy burps and fishy aftertaste. That is because it's an ethyl ester fish oil that I talked about earlier. Why does that matter? Ethyl ester fish oil is unstable. It's an alcohol. So it is actually oxidizing in the bottle. So every month that goes by, it is oxidizing inside the soft gel. And if you don't believe me, take your fish oil from the store that's ethyl ester omega-3, cut it open and put it into a styrofoam cup you are going to hear that fish oil crackling and popping because it's oxidizing. It also will actually eat a hole through the bottom of that cup because it's an ethyl ester alcohol. If you take our omega-3 pill, cut it open, put it in a styrofoam cup, you will hear nothing because it is already a triglyceride omega-3 and it's stable. So it's not oxidizing. So that's, that's really the test. But again, it's going to say on the label whether or not it's uh, it's an omega-3 or it's a triglyceride omega-3. Standard dose is two soft gels per day. Uh, in this study, and, and we do recommend your first month, taking three a day will absolutely knock down that inflammation. And after that first month, go down to two soft gels a day would work, you know, typically for everyone. Uh, also, we have a half size omega-3, just real quick. This is not the one we used in the study, but so many people have trouble swallowing. Uh, ours is a 1,000 milligram. It's not a huge horse pill, but it is 1,000 milligrams. This one is a 500 milligram that my 
you know, uh, my kids when they were 10, 11 could take. Uh, this one has the added benefit of zeaxanthin and vitamin D3. So we added a couple of things here to the uh, dry eye mini. And then just, you know, we were talking about EPA, DHA. So in our two soft gels, on our typical um, dry complete, we are delivering 1,344 milligrams omega-3, 772 milligrams EPA, and 383 DHA. So we're 1,100 milligrams EPA DHA. Typically, you can look at your own bottle. Uh, I, I promise you, you do not have anything near this unless you have a couple of our, our well, who we consider our competitors. Uh, which are typically more expensive than what we offer. Uh, so again, we are delivering, and, and you know, we talked about how much it would take to de uh, derive 200 milligrams DHA. We're delivering almost twice that here. And again, certified sustainable uh, fishery, caught in Alaska, you know, certified uh, by the NSF. And that's, uh, that's exactly where they catch, catch the fish there in, in Alaska. I've actually been to the dock. They, uh, they would not let me get on the boat. I'm, I'm not a professional fisherman. So, <laughs> And when I looked at the waves, I didn't actually want to get on the boat anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And just real quick on uh, how they you know, fish for these. Not, not only is the fishery the most sustainable fishery in the world, but they also are using sustainable methods to reduce the bycatch. So we really uh, spent a lot of time, many years actually, to try to find a source of Alaskan wild caught fish to make our very, very uh, high end, uh, highly refined, highly tested. Um, our product is certified by Health Canada. It's certified for sale in Europe, which are very difficult to get done. Um, so we are actually tested like a drug. So every lot we make is tested and certified to meet uh, not only what's on the label, but also that it doesn't contain contaminants uh, that are known to be found in, in other fish oils. So just talking about, uh, again, and I will get to the results of the study, but I wanted to tell you about the products that we used on these patients. And uh, this, this is a question I should have asked everyone. Um, but if you want to go ahead and chat that to me now, um, how many of you are using a dry eye compress? We talked about earlier the importance of the meibomian glands, the glands in your lids. Well, what is it that can open up those glands and get them flowing again? Because if they don't produce, they actually will close over and go away. So that is the risk here. And when we do clinical studies, in this clinical study in particular, there were several patients, you know, who had uh, almost all their glands gone uh, in, in an entire eye. So they might have two or three glands instead of 30. So you do not want that because you'll be using eye drops for the rest of your life. Um, so multiple studies have proven that this can increase the lipid layer and improve tear breakup time. That's how long it takes for for your eye to start tearing. But you really need to get that compress uh, or uh, the temperatures needed to, to open up those glands. I'm gonna talk about it a little more, but it has to be over 40 degrees C. So you're talking over 110, you know, 100, 120 is about exactly right where you wanna be. Uh, for five minutes, we'll really open up those glands. So why, how are czars different? I saw some seeds and, and some other things in here. Um, I see some that are using ours, that's great. Okay, so what makes ours different? So the key to getting heat to penetrate into your eyelids and into your glands is moisture. There's a big difference between dry heat and moist heat, right? We all know that. We all say, uh, you know, Arizona is dry heat, so 120 degrees you can handle. But if you were in Florida and it was 120 and humid, man, that's, that's really tough. And why is that? Because the heat penetrates um, quite a bit more. And I'm actually going to show you a data point on that. But it's like 35% more uh, penetration of that heat 
which actually increases blood flow, uh, which is what happens when you heat up tissue. You're, you're actually dilating the capillaries and getting more blood flow through. Well, why is that good? Well, it's good for inflammation to get more blood through, more nutrients, more oxygen to try to heal that tissue. And that's what we're trying to do. So our compress uh, weighs typically twice as much as others, so delivering more moisture. But more importantly, we have this feature called hydro block, which actually blocks the steam from coming out the front and pushes it back to your eyelids. So that's why ours delivers 10 minutes of heat and moisture uh, when others don't, they really don't. I mean, you're talking a minute or two. And here actually can show you this uh, blue line here. So here, first of all, here's the temperature, the red line here. So 120 degrees I talked about is just perfect. And this is 10 minutes. And then 95% humidity, almost for that whole 10 minutes. Five minutes is all you really need. You're going to get all the benefit out of five minutes. And you see here, a, a good clinical study was done. 35% uh, uh, increased blood flow, 35% more than dry heat. So moist heat, 35% more blood flow. And that's really the key here. And just one more to kind of... <laughs> really uh, beat this, this message home. We actually used a thermography, so a camera that can, that can measure the temperature of, of the device, of your face, of your eyelids. And what we found, so starting temperature about 99 degrees, uh, and then our comp wearing our compress for three minutes, uh, it was 124 max when, when it was uh, placed on the patient. So three minutes. And when we remove the compress, you can see this bottom picture, the actual eyelids were 106.7, so almost 107 degrees. Increased the eyelid temperature almost eight degrees. So uh, believe it or not, there is a, a, a clinical study that shows, not ours, somebody else's, that uh, if you can get the meibomian glands up to 106.7, uh, and that was a complete coincidence. Did not know that was the exact temperature. Uh, 41 and a half C, that is the optimal temperature to melt mybum. So you're trying to melt the mybum that's congealed in those glands and get it flowing again. And that's what our compress will do. You, there aren't, there isn't another compress that can do this, that can raise your eyelid temperature eight degrees. So, and just uh, one more data point here. Whoops. Uh, the way to the, that eye doctors will look at how well your tear layer is functioning is tear breakup time. I don't know how many of you have ever had that done to you, but it's a pretty simple test. They, they put a little piece of paper in there to measure when your tears are breaking up. But uh, the point here is this in this study, uh, this is just a case study of one patient. Uh, tear breakup time was about six seconds at day one, which is just borderline severe dry eye. They used our compress for five days, five minutes a day. Day two increased to 6.7. Day five, almost 13 seconds. So 123% increase in tear breakup time in five days. So bang for the buck, uh, the compress is, is really unbeatable. Um, but when you combine that, I'm going to show you the results in just a minute here. And uh, I think we're, we're, we're you know, probably another five minutes here, we'll be wrapping up just in case you're uh, getting tight on time. And just one more point on the, on the dry compress, you know, cold therapy is really nice for uh, also for puffy eyes, allergies, you know, the hot cold combination is great for inflammation. You're kind of moving, you're, you're dilating, vasodilating, increasing uh, those capillaries with hot, with heat, and then you're cooling it down to push that blood out. Um, so that's a good way to treat inflammation as well and allergies and puffy eyes. So if you put ours in the freezer for an hour, again, same patient, 99 degrees, uh, put the our compress in the freezer for one hour, put it in a plastic bag uh, so that it keeps it clean. And that's going to be about 36 degrees when it comes out. 
And because of all the little beads in there, it really conforms nicely uh, to, your, to your eye socket and really gets in there and delivers the cold. So this lowered the temperature, you know, 29 degrees of that tissue. So you're talking about a huge swing here. So works really well for cold therapy. Okay, so here are the results of our clinical study. Uh, so baseline OSDI stands for ocular surface disease index, and it's, a, it's an objective measure. It's actually the best measure we have for measuring dry eye. And baseline, these patients were almost a 60, which is you know, moderate, close to severe dry eye. So up here would be severe, so pretty close. So these, you know, not doing well. Uh, 30 days of the omega-3 and five minutes of the compress per day. After 30 days, no other treatments, 49% uh, decrease in the OSDI score. And that's tremendous. And even more important, 100% uh, of patients showed improvement in OSDI. So I've never seen a drug study uh, in dry eye or any other device where 100% of patients showed improvement and almost half were asymptomatic. So um, we, we really are confident that using this protocol, you're going to, sh you're going to have significant um, benefit in just 30 days. Tear breakup time, which we just talked about, had an 81% increase. So uh, again, this is 37 patients. This is statistically significant. This is a published peer-reviewed clinical study. So three seconds on average, that's really poor. And then almost up to five and a half seconds uh, in just 30 days. So what does it all mean? Uh, again, all patients showed improvement. 48% were asymptomatic, almost half no longer were showing symptoms of dry eye. Uh, this is a simple, inexpensive daily regimen that you can do to really make your eyes feel a heck of a lot better uh, and really help you with your, your daily living. Um, contact lenses, number one reason for dropping out of contacts is dry eye. And we have seen and heard, you know, many patients can get back to wearing uh, the contacts if they get on this protocol. I'm going to uh, address, there's a couple of questions here. Uh, and, and don't forget the whole body health benefits that you're going to get from taking this level of omega-3. And not only are you going to increase your omega-3, but you're going to flip that ratio uh, from omega-6 to omega-3 because the omega-3 is competing with the omega-6 and you're going to up your omega-3 level by probably 10x because you're probably getting 100 a day. Now you're getting, you know, 1,400 milligrams a day. You're going to see that ratio flip. There's actually a blood test uh, that you can get. Um, we actually have one here. Uh, we don't actually sell these. Um, omega-3 Index Plus from Omega Quant. I think they're about 40 bucks. Um, we have used them quite a bit, and these are great because they'll show you your baseline. If you really want to see what, what something like our omega-3 can do for you, take one of these before, take our omega-3 for 60 days, take another one of these after, and you're going to see tremendous benefit. We, we've done some studies ourselves, and, and you know we've easily cut people's ratios in half in 60 days, so I would expect something like that. Um, and I can email out a link to them. We don't, we don't sell that product, but it is a very good product. So just a couple more slides here. Um, if you want to read our clinical study, uh, you can go to our website, ocusci.com. It's on there. So I, I often get questions, and I'll, I'll answer a couple other questions here. You know, what do I do? Because I have dry eye. <laughs> so uh, my daily regimen is a, is a one, two, three, right? So I, I already said my speed score, that's a different way to measure this, uh, is 12. So I'm moderate uh, to severe dry, depending on the day and the month and what I'm doing. Um, so, and if, and let me throw this out there. Uh, we've got a Facebook page and, and a website called whatisdryeye.com. And it's purely educational, uh, very much like this presentation. It would, you know, a lot of clinically driven 
solutions uh, and discussion around dry eye. So what is dryeye.com? If you go to our Facebook page, we will actually uh, give you the speed score um, PDF. It's just a one pager. It'll take you three minutes to fill out. And that would give you a starting score. This is what your, your eye doctor, if he's really good with dry eye, this is what he or she should be doing. Speed score, maybe OSDI, but speed score is easier. So I would highly encourage you to do that for yourself. So you have a baseline number, uh, get on something like our, you know, our omega-3 and our compress and take another one 30 days later and you'll see a significant improvement, I'm sure. Uh, but it's good to have an objective measure. So Facebook, what is dry.com. So what do I do? Uh, first thing in the morning, I use Lid Hygienics, which we do sell. Uh, it's an all natural preservative free lid scrub. So just a couple of, it's a foam, couple of squirts in my hand and simply just rubbing my eyes. I wake up with sticky stuff and um, some mybum, you know, on my eyelids and kind of sticking my eyes together. Um, and that really helps me in the morning. And then uh, I take two of the dry complete and take it right before breakfast. And that goes with all dietary supplements. You should take it right before eating. Why is that? Be two reasons. Uh, motility. So motility is the, is the movement of your stomach getting helping with digestion, right? Moving food down into your uh, into your small intestine. So uh, once you eat, your smooth muscle of your stomach starts to activate. That's motility. Second is hydrochloric acid. So when you again, when you start to eat, all the um, all the hormones and the salivatory glands, all that starts to fire up your hydrochloric acid. So you want your hydrochloric acid up to help with digestion. So putting food on top of whatever supplement you're taking is always the best way to take it. So right before you eat, uh, take those, those supplements. And then I use my compress uh, at lunchtime or I'll use it in the evening or maybe even both. So just three minutes feels great, refreshes my eyes especially if I'm outside doing something, um, it's windy, you know, I might have worse symptoms than normal. Um, so let me see if I can address a couple of questions here. Um, how often should the compress be replaced? Okay. Uh, you know that our compress, uh, we offer a one-year uh, guarantee, a warranty, which nobody else does. And we'll replace it uh, if it breaks. So the only thing that's going to go wrong with the compress, because it has a machine washable cover, is eventually the very thin uh, fabric that contains the natural mineral will break because it needs to allow moisture and heat to come out. So it can't, it has to be porous. So, but we know using the machine washable cover, it's protecting that fabric uh, between the oils of your face and that fabric, uh, you're going to get at least a year out of that compress. And it's just a natural function of that mineral. So it'll keep working as long as the beads are, the natural mineral beads are inside that compress, you don't need to replace it. Uh, so I'd expect you to get a minimum of a year, maybe, you know, a year and a half out of it. Uh, and it costs, you know, less than 30 bucks. So <laughs> you're talking pennies, pennies on the dollar. Uh, so let me see what other questions we had here. Somebody like the uh, compressed data. Good, good, good. Okay. I see somebody said Lipaflow and LPL, which I think is probably IPL. So, okay. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, both pretty widely known uh, ways to treat, and that's really treating MGD. It's really treating the glands. Um, hopefully that gave you relief, but you really need to do the home care because if you've had a treatment, it's only going to last so long. Um, it might last a year. It might last two years. It might last six months or three months, depending on what you're doing and what's causing it. So you really have to do this home care of omega-3 and compress to keep those glands open and functioning. Um, just wanted to see what, okay. All right. So we're just about done. This is the last slide here. So I did, uh, so first of all, thank you very much for attending. I appreciate it. And as a thank you, um, you're all uh, welcome to go to our website, uh, Occusci.com, go to the patient store. It's right on the 
front page, right on the right hand side. And we're offering you this $30 off coupon. You use the code webinar. And that will essentially get you, you know, a free bottle of the dry eye complete. Um, you are paying shipping on that basically. So it's going to be like whatever that 590, like less than six bucks. Um, so that's going to get you 60 soft gels of, of the excellent omega-3. Um, that by itself will improve your dry eye, no doubt about it. But combining that with the compress and maybe adding in the uh, lid scrub to me would be the ultimate uh, thing that, that you should do if you've got, you know, severe dry eye and it's really bothering you. Um, so we do offer, you know, what we call starter kits. So the regular starter kit is the Omega and the compress. A deluxe is the whole thing there that you see. Um, so please use that coupon. It is limited to 50 of the first uh, people who use it. So just you know, don't delay if you if you want to try these out. Um, and again, you know, we're we're very very confident on these products. Uh, money back guarantee on the dry eye complete. That you're not going to get fishy burps, and that you're going to feel an improvement in your dry eye symptoms. Um, last but not least, and I'll take a look at the chat see if there's any other questions. But we are recruiting. Uh, brand ambassadors. We are trying to kind of get the word out uh, better than we have. We really haven't used Facebook. We're not great on social media, but we're trying. Um, so if you are pretty active on Facebook and, you know, have interest in helping us share, you know, uh, some data and, you know, we do post things that are relevant to dry eye, vision health, overall health uh, on our um on our Facebook sites, which is whatisdry.com and ocuside.com. So if you're interested in that, and we don't ask much, just that you make a couple of posts, maybe forward repost what we're posting, um, you would get 50% off on all your retail purchases from us, you know, going forward. And if you're interested in, in applying for that, go to our website, ocuside.com backslash brand dash ambassador. Um, and it's, it's in our about section. So if you go to the website, go to about, you'll find it there, brand ambassador. Or you can just email us if you if you can't find it. Uh, and just answer a couple of questions and we'll let you know, you know, if you qualify. But we, we're looking, you know, for people who are interested in the subject, passionate about it. Um, and, you know, we're not looking to throw just commercials out there. It's really about education for us. Uh, that's our main it's our, our, we know that a, a informed and educated consumer is going to find their way to our products because we offer the best products in this space and, and we're very proud of the ones we put out. We don't have a ton of products. We, we only uh, will launch products that we know we can clinically prove uh, work and, and, and can be best in class. So, uh, so I want to respect your time, but let me see if there's any other oh, four new messages. Okay. Let's see. I learned so much. Thank you. You're so welcome. All right. I think I, uh, I think I convinced someone to use their uh, compress um, more on a regular basis. Just do it. It's it's three minutes of your of your day, and it's I use it as a instead of meditation. Maybe just uh, go ahead and and use your compress. It feels great. Um, yeah, that someone asked, are those prices in U.S. dollars? Yes, yes, they're in U.S. dollars. Um, yeah, you're asking uh, if you can get a recorded version. Absolutely. Uh, we are recording this, and we will put it up on our website. So we'll be sure to uh, send out an email uh, with a link to that so you, you can share it and, and have it to refer to. Um, and someone's asking... How can they get a compress? Well, that's easy. Uh, go to our uh, store. You can call us. We have people who actually answer the phone here. Um, uh, or just email us and, and our customer service will, will get back to you. Um, so, all right. Well, let's see. Uh-huh. Okay, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the time and attention. And again, we will send out a link to the presentation and uh, feel free to email us with, with any other questions you might have and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a nice evening or, or afternoon. Uh, take care.